It's November 2018 and I'm in a remote part of central Gabon, joined by my friend Stain and our local fixer Gislaine. We've been driving since early morning and we were supposed to reach our destination before nightfall, but it seems like we're still a few hours away. Seeing overturned trucks like these is a chilling reminder that driving at night isn't a good idea in these parts. This is just the start of our adventures though, with much more to come. The expedition begins in Libreville, Gabon's capital, with a few days of shopping and waiting. Shopping. I'm in a taxi heading back to the hotel. It's quite hot, isn't it? I'm already burnt. Yeah, you're kind of burnt. But it's fine, we're going to, to the AC in a bit. On the fourth day, we managed to meet and strike a deal with our fixer so we can finally leave for the rainforest. I did factor delays into our expedition plans, but it's still quite annoying to be wasting so much time. We must get used to it though, time flows at a different pace here. These drivers have been stranded here for two weeks and they don't seem to stress about it. The Congo Basin Rainforest is one of the most important areas of wilderness on the planet and it includes most of Gabon's surface area. It is teeming with wildlife and it has unbelievable levels of biodiversity. Gabon itself is smaller than the Republic or the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but compared to these two, it is much more stable and less populated. More than 80% of the country is forested, and most of its 2 million inhabitants live in cities. That is quite impressive for a country larger than the UK, especially an African country. One other thing that made Gabon so attractive for our purposes is the utter lack of tourism infrastructure. It took me about a year to research and plan the expedition because I could barely find anyone who had traveled here. The country is quite well off due to the oil and gas deposits, so the government never got around to encouraging tourism. This means there are precious few cars to rent and places to stay in. Getting in touch with anyone is almost impossible and reliable fixers are hard to come by. On the upside, there are no hordes of tourists and in many places we are all alone with nature and wildlife. Our aim is to record rainforest soundscapes at all times of day and night in at least three national parks. We want to cover primary rainforest, secondary rainforest, young growth woodland and woodland savanna. We would also like to record species like forest elephant, gorilla and other mammals. I know it won't be an easy undertaking, but the rewards are massive if we manage to pull it off. This is an area that has hardly been visited by people with cameras let alone microphones and recording equipment. After a long day of driving, we reach the village of Lope, where we spend the night. Accommodation is basic, as expected. I have to struggle with my mosquito net, but luckily I'm too tired to care or to feel the bites. I'll just sleep like this. Okay. Next morning we have a very quick breakfast and then we leave for Lope National Park, joined by a couple of park rangers and Andy, a British hydrologist who wants to see gorillas and elephants. As soon as we leave the village, we start to see wildlife, including a family of elephants just on the side of the road. So far so promising. Lope National Park is a dilapidated research station. 
that our fixers is land took over and is now bringing tourists to. It's quite remote and in a very sorry state at first glance. This makes it perfect for our purposes as there are no tourists around and the soundscape is magnificent. It is also surrounded by beautiful secondary rainforest for as far as the eye or the drone can see. Before we can do any recording we have to scout out the place, so we go on a recce without much gear. And this is when we reach our first river crossing. It looks a bit dodgy, but we manage to cross without falling in the murky water. We've been hiking in the forest for about, I don't know, an hour or so. And it's incredibly hot and humid, as you would expect. So we're taking a short break for hydration and getting some rest. It sounds brilliant. There's a lot of insects, a lot of frogs, several interesting birds. There is a lot of elephant spore, or tracks, and dung on the trail. We have to be careful not to bump into one, as visibility isn't always ideal. There's not much you can do if you get between a mother and her calf, or anywhere near a male and must. Big game is interesting, but minute wildlife abounds too. It's looking very promising for recording, and I can't wait to bring the microphones and recorders out. Lope National Park it's a huge expanse of secondary rainforest, which is forest that has been selectively logged at some point in the recent past. In secondary rainforest, the undergrowth is denser because gaps in the canopy let more light reach the ground. In primary rainforest, on the other hand, the canopy is so thick that very little light reaches the ground, resulting in a very sparse and airy forest floor. We are back at camp. There's a lot of bees. Not much change from today. And we're having coffee. There's a lot of bees here. <laughs> There's a whole lot of bees, you have to see this. They're fighting over something. I need to get my coffee and go away. So. Okay, so I am literally being swarmed by bees right now. I got away from the lounge area and for a minute I was okay, but now it seems like they found me again. Lonnie said that we, we can't go in the dark. Right. Because the elephants in the rain season are way too Exciting. active in the dark. Right. So we can't. So I asked him, so when is the last moment we should leave? Um, and he would like to go in like the next five minutes and I will set up my Sony and my clippies. Cool. So here we are again, crossing the river back to do some recording. And now I have to turn. Yeah.
We reach a place that looks promising for sound recording and is far enough from camp. We each set up one drop rig with handheld recorders and small level ear mics. I borrowed a pair of loot binaural mics from Stain, since my gear is still in the car. I will pair this with my Sony D100 handheld. Back at camp, we take our suitcases out and start putting together our main recording rigs. By the time we go out, the dust chorus has finished, but the night ambience still sounds great. There's a storm approaching and I hope our equipment will survive it. Back at the lodge, we prepare for a candlelit dinner in the company of countless insects. Some of them are so keen to join us that they end up in the rice. Mmm, tasty protein. So, uh, we left the rigs out overnight. Both the big rigs and the small ones. So we drove for about a kilometer up the road. Put the rigs out, left the trail camera out. Now we're back and we're going to have a very quick dinner and then it's us to bed. I need to get some sleep. I'm incredibly tired. I'm exhausted. I think Stan is as well. He doesn't, he doesn't show it. He doesn't show it, but he is. Yeah. This light, this light is good for me. So yeah, um, there might be a storm tonight. We're hoping to catch some elephants, gorillas, leopards, lynxes. Lynxes? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we can catch some uh, serval or something. And I will see you in the morning. The storm arrives as soon as I get into bed and I fall asleep to the soothing sound of thunder. Stain, however, isn't as fortunate. I'll let him explain what happens. I'll be quick because George is sleeping just next door. It started raining a proper tropical rainstorm. Liters and liters and liters of water dropping from the sky like you're standing on your tap, and of course. There's a leak in my roof. Um, I'm in a mosquito net under the roof. And yeah, of course, there's one hole on it in the roof just above my face. So I quickly changed the mattress, which is completely soggy now. Um, with a few flying termites and other insects getting into my mosquito net because I had to move quickly and I uh, I've been smashing them with this great book I can recommend it um, it's also great for smashing mosquitoes and termites so yeah I'm gonna go to the last dry bit of my mattress and sleep the rest. Good night. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. It's been a rough night. It rained quite a lot. It was a big storm last night. Good for recording, but probably not good for our rigs. Because uh, the small rig was not protected against rain at all. So the mics 
probably not I'm probably useless now. Guys off. Um, this morning obviously woke up to the sound of bees. There's like a million of them where we sleep. I had to wash my face, brush my teeth, but I did that while running around. And now I have to keep walking otherwise they find me. It's so annoying to be covered in bees. So yeah, uh, I wish I could take a shower. I haven't taken a shower in three days. I feel sticky, stinky, yuck. Um, but it's not possible for now. I'll attempt a wet wipe shower later. For now it's time for, for coffee, a quick breakfast. And we'll see what we can do today. Uh, Stain apparently didn't sleep too well last night because it was raining in his part of the, of the house, of the bungalow. So I let him sleep for another half an hour, an hour before we go pick up the rigs. So this is where we stay, at least where we stayed on the first night. I think we moved to a different spot. This is Stain's castle. Stain's room. Problem is that it's raining in here through the roof. So he had a fun time last night trying to move his mattress from where it was raining. I don't envy him. <laughs> yeah, so this is my room. It's marginally better in that there was no rain last night. It's not marginally better. That's a lot better, yeah. After breakfast and coffee, we drive to the place we left our human rings at and pick them up. So we're at the spot where we left the rigs out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything looks, looks alright. There are bees, of course, so there's no going, getting away from the bees. But apart from that, things are looking good. We have to leave the car and proceed on foot to collect our small rigs. More river crossing fun, of course. Here we go. Last night's storm has river caused crossing. the river level to rise, so Our we fun. need to find an alternate path. It took us almost an hour to get here because the river, the river level, is higher, but we are finally here. Oh. Please don't look too happy. Go away bees. The recordings seem to be okay. I didn't hear any crackles, any pops, anything bad on the last recording. There was some humidity, I think it's condensation, on the actual recorder. And yeah, this is good. I think we're good to go now. We're good to go. Cool. I'm testing a new insect repellent. This one doesn't contain any DEET or any chemicals. So yeah, I'll uh, post back once I found if it works or not. So this is stain. He just thought about starting a new career as a beekeeper. He has about a hundred on his head now. It's not too bad, I guess. He's going to try the local remedy leaves. We stayed in one place for too long. Yeah. The bees make it impossible to spend more than a few seconds in one place. So we need to constantly be on the move. We don't want to move too fast and to bump into an angry silverback though. So we have to be careful. The soundscape is too good to not stop and record. We managed to stay still for about 10 minutes before the bees chase us away.
back on the makeshift bridge, I realize my balance is surprisingly good. Those yoga classes sure come in handy now. Okay, that's it. I'm over the river, but uh, there's still staying to come. I am exhausted. I need lunch and a few hours of relaxation. Ideally, be free. At the lodge, we managed to move to a slightly less leaky hut. This one has some nets at the windows too. Unbelievable luxury. It is also slightly larger so we can have a work area and separate sleeping quarters. After a few hours of relaxation and data management, we hike up the hill to leave the main rigs out again. This night session is definitely more productive, with a family of elephants passing by and spending some time inspecting our equipment. They do not approve of the camera trap though. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock. It's been a long night, it's been raining a lot, but towards dawn I think the rain stopped. Now it's starting again. The soundscape was really good, I'm hoping for great recordings. The plan for today is to either go and pick up the rigs and come back, or maybe to just pick them up on our way back to Ralope. Okay, I'll be the road again. I'm gonna pick up my small rig, which is here, and then go for breakfast and a cup of coffee because I really need it and I will see you later so Spain is <clears throat> boiling water for coffee among a swarm of bees is that the highest it can burn? I don't know it doesn't turn back unless I push it okay yeah, yeah that's much better no. Ah, coffee. Coffee makes everything more bearable. Apparently we're having car troubles, but nothing that can be fixed with bush mechanic skills. It doesn't take too long before we're ready to go. We just got to the spot where we left the rigs out yesterday and it looks like we were fortunate enough that a small troop of elephants came by. I managed to, ca to get them on my trail camera even as one of the elephants pushed the camera away with his trunk. It was really funny. Stein was uh, really into doing all his work in the field. He's dismantling the Sonella right now. I will not dismantle mine, I'll just keep it in my hands. Just hold it in my hands until we get back. Oh shit, there's a swarm of bees and... Ah, I need to run away now. Oh no, this one will never work. This one terminate. If you are a chef, they terminate. It's impossible to not be awed by the extent of forest coverage. We try for hours on forest roads and we barely see any traffic.
Eventually, we reach an area where mango trees grow in tracts of savanna, right next to the road. It looks like elephants visit this place every night to feed on the fruit that falls to the ground. This gives us an idea, but more on this in the next episode. Did you enjoy watching this video? Make sure to like, share and subscribe, and feel free to check out my sound effects libraries. You can also support and encourage me to create more videos by becoming a patron. All links are provided in the description. See you in the next episode.